Hi, yeah, it's Jackie. We're on another uh, Zoom call uh, today and we're looking ahead to more county finals at the weekend. We did have our review of last weekend's uh, action earlier in the week, but we have more uh, fantastic games to look forward to. And I'm very pleased to be joined by three players who will have key roles to play for their respective teams. Uh, at the weekend, top left hand side of my screen, Aileen Wall, Bally McCarbury in Waterford. Uh, bottom left is Louise Henshey from uh, Banner Ladies uh, in County Clare. And bottom right, Olivia Divoli from the Galway Champions, Kilcar and Clon Byrne, as they look to go for, as uh, Olivia informed me before we come on, an eight in a row. Um, Bally Mack are going for a 39th in a row. And the Banner are looking uh, to win back their title after beating um, Kilmetal last year's champions at the semi final stage. So I'm going to go to you first, Aileen. How has uh, everyone in Ballymac? It was down that way um, earlier on this year, pre COVID, to record a little piece with Michael Ryan uh, under the under cloak of darkness. We got away with it anyway until the night yes, of the Volunteer yeah. Awards. Um, so he's the manager now of the team. So um, it, it, the wheel has come full circle in so many ways for Michael. Oh, definitely, yeah. And um, I think. In every, in every year that we've played, I think Michael has been involved in, in some capacity, you know, and um, this year he's back at the helm and um, over the last two years he was part of the management team. So he wasn't ever far away from, from what was going on. So um, it's great to have Michael back in charge. You know, he has such passion for the game. So, you know, that comes through in his, in his coaching and, and I think it comes through hopefully on the field when we're playing too. I'd say, Ellie, you know, wherever he's gone and he's managed inter-county hurling teams as well and, and various different roles, you can take um, uh, the man out of Ballymac, but you can't take Ballymac out of the man. He's always there, as you say, in some shape or form. Yeah. Oh, that's it. You know, I think he just lives, breathes and, and eats football and, and hurling. You know, whatever it is, um, he'll be at it and, and he'll be passionate about it and he'll give it everything. And um, this year he's given us everything that he's got and uh, he got a great management team together, thankfully. So... Um, hopefully it will it will pull us through on Sunday. We'll come back to um, Bally Mac in a little while, um, and we'll chat about the the real family affair that it is with yourself and, and Ryan's and, and many more. Um, but I'm going to go down to Claire and and Louise. How are things with you, Louise? Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, looking forward to another county final, Louise. How many will this be for you? Do you know in 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 total? Yeah, this uh, is our thirteenth final in a row, actually. To to be. Uh, contesting so um, yeah I'm just glad to be back there now to be honest um, disappointed last year you know to lose the, the title but I think everyone has reacted in the right way and uh, really there's a great hunger about everyone now so I'm really looking forward to Sunday. How do you re how do um, you get back on the horse after after losing a game like that, Louise? Because you're you're more accustomed to success than than losing matches I would suggest but uh, defeats like I'd say would sting you. Yeah they do and you know you really have to look internally like and um you can blame different things and things beyond your control but really and truly when we you know we met very early this year and we had a look at ourselves and we were disappointed with ourselves you know with the way we prepared and the way we performed um so in a way that's good because there's loads to work on and uh really just to get back there but there's a great hunger and drive in this squad of players you know and uh they've definitely reacted the right way so far so um hopefully now as i said sunday is is uh it's a big one for us you know good wish you well um louise and thanks for coming on and you too alien and of course olivia divoli uh thanks for coming on olivia um kilcarran clambaron as you say going for eight in a row and you've risen obviously to to provincial success and national prominence as well in recent times what's the the mood in the camp. Uh, I, I, I'll talk to you about Claire Galway as well, an up and coming team and some some really young, talented players that, that you, you play alongside with Galway as well. Um, what's this challenge going to be like, Olivia? Um, we're really looking forward to the game on Sunday. Uh, Claire Galway have been playing very well this year and are very strong as usual. Uh, we played them in last year's county final as well, yeah. and that was very tough. So I suppose we're looking forward to the game. Uh, we know that's going to be very competitive and, and definitely a big challenge for us. But we're just kind of focusing on our own performance at the moment and what we can do well in that. What was it like just getting back to club football and that, Olivia? Because obviously you, you played a key role in goal. We get into the All Ireland final last year as well, and there was a stage this year, I guess, where we didn't know whether we'd have any football. So it just must be lovely to be back, back with your friends and and the people you've grown up with and and, and doing what you love best. Yeah, it's great to be back. For a long time, it looks like there mightn't be any football at all this year. So it's great to get back to see everyone, especially with the clubs as well. It's the girls you've kind of grown up with playing. 
it's nice to get back and we're lucky enough that it looks like we'll probably have a club championship and an inter-county championship this year hopefully yeah fingers crossed we'll keep it we'll keep fingers and toes crossed on that one that everything goes according to plan uh we'll be back to you shortly um olivia alien back to your good self obviously i mentioned the the, the family element and um you know, there's obviously Sinead and Louise and Michelle, uh, the Ryan clan. But yourselves, the walls are, are well represented as well, Aileen. Yeah, so there's myself, um, Marie and Linda. Now, um, I suppose Linda hasn't, she had a baby last year. So yeah. um, she didn't play last year, but she's she's back on the scene now this year. I think we couldn't keep her away. So um, she's she's doing a bit of training and, and she's involved now. She's not, she's not as mad to be out in the field. She'd rather be a, a voice on the sideline with us and, and give us all the knowledge that she can. But um, she's back training and she's there if we need her, I, I suppose. Brilliant. Uh, what's it like um, being an auntie? Because I, I met the baby uh, actually when, when we <laughs> popped down um, earlier on this year. She was there. So um, it, it's a lovely, lovely thing, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. And um, we have two little nephews as well. But yes. it, was great to have a little, it was great to have a little niece. And um, unfortunately, she won't be playing for Ballymac. She lives, she lives in Clashmore. So we'll have to give her to them but but look we're we're delighted and we hope that she will have a bit of an interest in football in the future well, good stuff i'm sure there'll be no getting away from it knowing knowing the walls um alien yeah. louise um uh, you obviously played um with claire with distinction for many many years um how did you find the transition back then to 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 full-time club football i remember obviously a couple of years ago meeting you at the, at the sevens and, and winning that title as well um do you miss county at all at any stage or did you feel that looked at that that was a chapter of my life it's done it's dusted and you were able to have a a fairly seamless transition back to club or was there a little hankering to for county for a while after that oh well look i suppose uh there's a there's a bit of a run and joke and claire on uh, how many times i've retired at this stage you know, uh, <laughs> I, I went back a few times and like that i suppose i i felt i wasn't fully finished um and even a couple of years ago, I went back for a session and, you know, but it, it takes a while. Yeah, it definitely takes a while to adjust. You know, it's a big part of your life, as anyone would say. Um, and a big part of, you know, friendships and things like that that you've built with people over the years. Um, um, but no, definitely the last couple of years, I've become a bit more settled and uh, really enjoying um, the football at club level. And you know, everyone says it, but it's where you start and where you finish. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to be with a, a really good club in the banner, like, and we've a, a really good setup there. So it makes it a bit easier. And, um, yeah, so that has helped definitely, you know. Good. Uh, Louise, tell me a little bit. About, yeah, absolutely. Tell me a little bit about the club and, and, and its rise to prominence and, and maybe the numbers you're picking from and the catchment area there. Yeah, so I suppose last year, I don't know if you had seen, but we had our 25-year anniversary. Right. You know, so, um like a lot of our success really has been built on Fela winning teams um, at the start, like 2001, those years in 2005 and six. you know, some really good underage success um, that happened over those years and an awful lot of work that went on at underage level. And really that came, it came to the fore then with the senior level in 2008, with winning our first senior title. Um, so yeah, we've uh, we've a lot of dual players. We've um, and really over the last number of weeks, um, you know, it's been managing the load really and trying to keep people fresh. Like we, I think we've maybe twelve or thirteen um, Camogie players as well. Like we've four or five girls that won a county final with Ina Kilmona last um, Saturday, and we've another uh, four or five girls that won one with Kerr Finn and won a junior title with Kerr Finn on Sunday. So. We've um, a lot of dual players, so it's managing that really and uh, getting the most out of people that we can. But, mm. you know, minding people really, um, especially over this short uh, window really where both Mogi and football had to be played, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough time when you're trying to balance so many different commitments and trying to keep fresh and recovery is very, very important, obviously. And Olivia, back to yourself in terms of that. So obviously, look, you're a key member of the Galway setup as well, but for the time being, you're, you're, you're focused very much on club. Yeah, um, so club at the moment has been, has been the focus for the last few weeks. Um, I know, I think in next week, hopefully, we'll be back linking in with Galway. So we're looking forward to that as well. I know the Galway Championship starts in, I think, maybe like six to eight weeks. So it's kind of coming around quite quickly as well. How have you, how have you found the, the, the schedule and the intensity of it, Olivia, after such a, a spell away from, from competitive football? Did you find it hard to get back into it or was it something you were really relishing doing? 
Um, yeah, it's been hard to get back into it. I think we've had a match consecutively for the last nearly five weekends. Okay. Um, there's no break really at all, but it's good to be back. I think everyone's really enjoying it. It's nice to play club football as well, I suppose, during the summertime with the dry ground and fastball and that as well. So it's nice. Yeah, how have you found the experience of club ailing at this time of year when I guess, look, you, you, you'd hope to be still involved in, in championship with, with Waterford in, in some shape or form and you're probably tailoring everything towards club later on in the year. But I, I think we've seen over the past couple of weeks with live streams and, and this and that and, and the exposure that the club is getting that it's a really, really good window and that the, the counties have, have certainly made the most of it and, and brought the club game to a new, a new prominence and a new level. I think you're on mute there, Aileen. You're all right. Come back Sorry. on. Yeah, back in. <laughs> Start so, all that again. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's been fantastic, you know, and I suppose every other year you're kind of trying to shove in matches and there's county managers saying you can't play this weekend, you can't play that weekend. And it's just been great this year. You just hit the ground running straight after coming out of COVID. And I suppose the training over COVID was so hard on your own. And mm. luckily I had me and Marie were able to train together and, you had somebody just to, to go do your things with, but it's been great and getting back into it. And you had a real free run at, at all your championship games. And I suppose it's difficult at times to get a game plan going, you know, during the year when it's so broken up and you're with your county team, there's players all over the place, really. So it was great to have everybody together for such a prolonged period. And you really get to work through things and, and I suppose get a game plan going and, um, no, it's been fantastic now. And like Olivia said, we've had a couple of games on the trot now for a few weeks and um, it really just gets you back into the run of things. And I suppose it's a good point for building towards, you know, if we're all in the county finals, it's been a good way of building up towards that. You've had, you know, very consecutive games um, going on on each week to, to improve on. And then tell me a little bit about Stradbally because obviously you, you take nothing for granted and I guess, look, you're, you're probably sick to death of hearing it, you know, 37, 38 and, and, and going for 39. Does that bring its own pressure or is it something that you embrace, these numbers that keep being trotted out year after year? Because it, it, when it comes to these numbers, you're victims of your own success and I mean, mm. you're almost at the 40 but I'm sure you're just focused on next game and looking no further than the weekend and the challenge that lies ahead. Oh, that's definitely it. You know, those numbers, you know, as fantastic as they are, you know, I don't have 38. I just want my next one, you know what I mean? And there's a good few girls on the panel who this will be their first uh, yeah. senior debut, you know, in a county final. So for them, it's it's going to be so important. And uh, the second um, a year is finished, it, we, it's great. We celebrate that. But as soon as the new season begins, we just, it's all going home for that year. 2020 was the year to, to go at it again and, and see if we can we can reach the heights that we did the year before. Yeah, absolutely. And Louise, um, Aileen makes a very good point there that there are always young and fresh and hungry players coming into a setup. And while the more experienced players might have won multiple multiple titles, um, I think Sharon Courtney mentioned a couple of weeks ago as well in relation to Dunham Mine that while you might be going for X amount of titles, there's always one or two in there that are going for their first or their second. And is that hunger really, really vital coming in and freshening things up on an annual basis? Oh, yeah, definitely. And um we had the same situation now this year. There's a, a couple of girls there that, you know, it would be their first if we can get over the line, you know, and that we always think about that. Like, um, and, you know, as well as yourself, and you never know when it's going to be your last as well. And, um, you know, whether through injury or retirement or whatever, like you just want to make the most of when you're there. Um, and, and like, as Aileen said there, like the numbers we've been getting the training, and it's just, it's really helped like to, to prepare well. Um, we wouldn't have seen such good numbers in previous years, you know, because of county training or different things, people away with, you know, work or college, whatever it is. So, but um, yeah, no, going back to your question, like it's definitely, it's, it's about the ones coming in and maybe the ones that are pushing on and, you know, you just have to try and make the most of, um, of a successful period that you can, you know, because um, it's not going to last forever. Like. Yeah, and I guess it's the same point to you, Olivia, in terms of, okay, you've won, this is your eighth final in a row, but okay, there's been seven before this, but this is the only game that matters and it's a, it's a considerable challenge for you as well. But what's the, what's the influx of new talent been like in the squad this year? Are you still working pretty much off last year's squad, Olivia? No, we've got a, a good few players in. Players have kind of come from underage or players have progressed up from under 16 um, from the junior teams as well. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of new players um, coming through as well and they bring something different. They're very hungry, they show no fear, they love getting on the ball 
Uh, we've lost a talented underage players as well. Um, so that's good. And it's great to filter them in gradually into the team too. And Claire Galway, can t- tell me a little bit about Claire Galway. And uh, you're familiar, obviously, with some of the some of the players that you you you'll know so well. I've seen many of these players, Claire Galway players, um, at schools level, and then on on successful Galway underage teams, and coming up into the senior ranks now. Um, a really promising young club there as well. Yeah, Claire Galway have been very strong in Galway football for a long time. Um, they've had a lot of underage success, like you said, a lot of success with the school also. I've played with a lot of the girls from Clare Galway with, at senior level and at underage level, and they're serious talent. They're, they're very strong all over the pitch. They're a very athletic team, and we know that they're going to bring absolute hunger and um, tenacity on, on Saturday as well. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be ready, I'm sure, Olivia. Aileen, you'll have a few people able to watch the game anyway and able to go to it this uh, after the... Some of the restrictions were eased slightly. We were chatting to um, Amy Connolly and Martina O'Brien um, and Fanuna McKenna was able to have some fans at the Armagh final. Um, and, uh, but, but the girls involved in, 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 the, in the other finals in, in the 26 counties didn't have that chance to play in front of supporters. Is that important to a player, Aileen, or, or how do you feel about that? Or is it a case of when you get inside the whitewash that you're just focused very much on the game? Um, I suppose, yeah, look, when, when, when the game is on, I think, you know, you, you try your best to shut everything out. But, you know, for, for our families, I think, you know, it, it is major. You know, my parents um, are in the, the older age bracket, I suppose, now, and they, they've been locked at home for a long time, you know, and they're a real, an outlet for them is going to our games and they love coming and supporting. And, and that's the same for a lot of the girls' parents, you know, it's where they go and they get to meet, meet all the other people and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. it'll be major for them to get to go to the game and um, to get to see us play and um, not have to watch it on, on, a, on a computer screen when we set it up for them. But no, it, it'd be great. And a little bit of support. It is strange when you, when you are score, if you get a score or something and there's no cheer, you know, it, it is great to have a little bit of something behind you and uh, it does drive you on a bit. So, you know, it, it will bring something extra now to the game on, on Sunday that we haven't had, I suppose, um, in the last few weeks. Because he ha- has there been times in the past, Aileen, where you're maybe in a little bit of trouble and you have to dig really deep and you do hear those roars of, of, of the crowd driving you on and, and that uh, they talk about maybe the 16th man or the 16th woman. It's very much the case at times. Definitely. And uh, it was the case last year. We were playing in the Kent final against Rackormock. You know, we were up against it. We were That's six right. points down at half time, and, and for much of the second half, we were down as well. And, um, you know, when you get a little bit of, you you know, teams get their purple patch and we got that. But I really think that the, the crowd, you know, they spur you on even more and you can hear people shouting and, and telling you where to put the ball and, and what to do with it. And it does, it does give you that little bit of an extra kick that you need maybe to push on. Louise, just how big a motivation and an incentive is it for you to, to get your hands back on that county title again? And I guess the manner of the scoreline from the outside looking in um, of your semi-final victory uh, w- was quite impressive because obviously they were the champions last year, but you beat them quite comprehensively. So that must um, put you in a good place going into the final, Louise. Yeah, it does, you know, but I, it was, it's a funny one. Um, I don't think the, the scoreline reflected the game. It was a really tough game. Um, Kilmehill bring a great intensity to it, like um, and physicality, and you know we probably got some scores that we weren't putting away earlier in the championship. So it was great from that point of view, but it didn't feel like it was it was that big of a win afterwards. If you know what I mean? It was a really tough game. Um, but yeah, look, we take great confidence from it. You know, uh, beating the champions, and you know it gives us a, a great platform now going into the final. Absolutely. Olivia, Siobhan's, Siobhan's still going strong. She is still involved, heavily involved. Yeah, yeah she's still going strong. Good. What, what's, and there's more than, than you two as sisters. It's very much a family affair as it is with all the clubs. Um, Olivia, there's other sets of, of, of relations and that involved as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot of families with two or three players involved. Yeah. There's the Wards, the News, yes. the Flanagans. Bahis, the Gormleys, there's a lot of players, sisters and cousins and, and twins and all sorts of relationships. Uh, does, that, uh, does that in itself, uh, you know, you hear about the, the club as family and you hear that, 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 that statement so often. But is, is that very much the case, that when you're involved in a setup like that, with so, such a close-knit group that it, it creates that culture and, and that, those standards that you, you want to set and that drive you on to succeed? Yeah, I think the club is very special. Like my youngest sister is just 14. 
So this year has been the first year where she's been able to play senior football and I've been able to play with her. Wow. That's probably not an opportunity that we, we will get playing inter-county level because she'll either be too young or I'll be too old. <laughs> but, uh, so it is, it is lovely to be able to get to play with, with your siblings and with your friends. Um, and it's something that the club just, just has that extra bit of special compared to inter-county doesn't have the same. Yeah, absolutely. Alien, would you echo that? I mean, that, that, that real bond that you have, obviously you mentioned um, Mairead and Linda there as well and, and, the, and, and the other families involved. It really creates that togetherness and unity within, the, within what, what is a very special club. And I only got a small taste of it when I was down, but you could even sense it in the air how special Ballymac is. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, a lot of this team that this current senior team now, we've been playing together since we were since we could hold a football, you know, and um, when you're together for that long and you, you really get to know players and you, you get to to really gel as a team. And I suppose um, my first introduction to, to senior football in Ballymac was I, I just followed Linda and Marie to training and he gave me the number 31 jersey. I'd say I was a glorified by ball getter. But, you know, that's what it was. It was we just wanted to emulate what was going on and we, we just wanted to be around these amazing players that were there, the likes of Anya Wall, you know, and that went before us. And we just wanted to be around them. And if it meant getting the balls or picking up the cones and sitting as a sub for the training game, then that's what you did, you know. And um, it really is special, like Olivia said, to, to get to play. And it drives you on as well. And the odd time you can give a good... Uh, a good talk about it when you go home. There might be some expletives added in there, but when you go home, you can trash it out, you know, and you say, why didn't you give me the ball or whatever? But, um, you know, it, it, it really is um, great to have such good friends and, and family involved all the time. And on, this is the last time I'm going to mention the run, right? Okay, I promise you. But <laughs> it, it, this, all, this all started 13 years before you were born, this un, un, yes. unbroken. Uh, do, do you ever think about that or reflect on it at all? Definitely, no, we definitely do. And it, it's, you know, over the last number of years after the county final, we've been very fortunate to have won them. And it's it's great to look back then. And um, I suppose we're coming up this year has, is a very big year for us. It's our 40th um, anniversary. So, um, you know, it's it's brilliant. And Catherine Ryan, um, Michael's wife, she actually yeah. did a great thing over the last number of years. She put together some boards um, with all pictures from each year. So um, there's a really special thing to have and to look back on. And it's so funny, you see pictures of people when, when they were just children and now they have their own children playing, you know. And it's, it's amazing to, to see them in a Ballymac jersey again and how, how things have moved on in, in the village. So um, look, it, it is great to look back on. But as I said earlier, you know, 2020 is, is a standalone year and we're only going out to, just to, to win this year. And I suppose it'll be great to add to the to the run but um this year is the most important one for us yeah i saw the boards actually she had them all yeah, lined up fantastic. in the dress room. amazing absolutely amazing yeah. i have to say yeah. louise talk to me a little bit about uh, you've seen players come and you've seen players go you, your own motivation and drive to keep, to keep going and, and and keep trying to win titles where, where does that come from yeah look i suppose um yeah we're, we're we're very driven there's a few of us there i was talking to someone the other day and there's actually nine on the panel on Sunday that were there in 2008, you know, so it's a, a a big number of players that have, you know, come through and stayed around and, you know, like, so there's a massive drive in us. Um, and like I was saying, like, you, you never know, like, these things don't last forever. And, um, you know, someday I won't be playing and like, you just want to make most of it while you're there. I suppose there's a great competitiveness about us really, you know, and, um, like it hurt last year not winning it and um and you know we really have worked really hard now this year to try and get it back you know but like we still have another 60 minutes of a real tough game ahead of us on Sunday but there's just a massive drive there from individuals and collectively and you know and an honesty as well like you know um you have to be honest with yourself and uh, as a team you know and where you're at and Sometimes you get wake up calls and um, it's hard words that have to be spoken or whatever, and it's the way you react to that. I suppose is is the making of you really, you know. Absolutely, Olivia. I, I just I, I want to touch on it briefly in terms of last year and. You played with Galway in Croke Park, unfortunately lost out. And then I was down at the Gaelic grounds in a classic All-Ireland club final and beaten effectively with the, with, with the last kick of the game. Um, how, do, how do you manage to cope with, with, with things like that when they happen in your career? 
Um, and how long does it take to recover from, from because there were heartbreaking losses for you? Uh, yeah, definitely. It was very hard. I suppose we were lucky with the Galway defeat that there was more football to come. Sure. So it was very disappointing at the time, but you just had to get on with it because you had to go back playing club football a week or two later. Um, and then with the club defeat, that was, I think it was kind of probably accumulation of the two defeats. It was very hard to take. And I suppose it did take until the new year to kind of get back. Once you get back playing, you kind of just have to put it behind you and, and look forward. And like we've looked at clubs like Moore and Abbey have lost the All-Ireland Finals. Dublin ladies have lost. Mm. So you kind of do get motivation from them that they went back and, and worked hard on what they could do. And then they've had their days. So hopefully, hopefully our day will come. Yeah, absolutely. And, and because Karen Clambern are really knocking at the door, how determined are you now to, to, to make another, another stab first at Galway, but perhaps obviously beyond after that? But first and foremost, to, to, what, what's the, the drive and the determination like to hold on to this Galway title like Olivia? I think we're very determined to hold on to it. We're very motivated. We're looking forward to the game on Saturday and we're fully aware of what Claire Galway are going to bring. Um, so we're just focusing on our own performance, making sure that we are prepared to the best of our ability and that we do everything we can to make sure that that we get over the line on Saturday evening. Absolutely. How important is that, Aileen, just picking up on Olivia's point that obviously you, you know your own strengths and you focus in on them and, and you play to your strengths, but that you're also aware of the threat that the opposition can bring. So how do you balance that in terms of, OK, we, we'll do what we're good at, but at the same time, we have to make sure that player X or player Y in the opposition doesn't get that freedom to, to express herself and perhaps cause you damage? Yeah, definitely. We know um, that Strabelli have, have a good few county players and, and we're keenly aware of their strengths. And I suppose that's something we've had to discuss over the last um, number of the last two weeks. But, um, you know, I think it's really important. A, a thing that we normally do is we really focus on our own game and um, you can't you can't go out anticipating what another team is going to do. And especially Stradbally, I suppose we haven't had much experience with them. Um, in, in, I suppose, such a high-pressure game over the last number of years. So they're going to throw absolutely everything they have at this. And uh, I think if we can control our performance and how well we play and the things that we're going to do, I hopefully we'll come out on top. But there are a few players that we're definitely going to keep our eye on. Absolutely. Louise, how important then is that big game experience and that, that little bit of know-how? And, and in terms of maybe guiding the younger players or the first-timers through it, because obviously once, you know, it's going to be a new experience for them as well. What can you say or do to, to help to help them on the day? Yeah, like it's it's really important, you know. Um, but I suppose you know, with a bit of youth, uh, comes no fear, like you know, and sure. uh, um, that that can be good too. But I'm sure they feel a bit more comfortable playing, you know, alongside older people like myself. But um, yeah, it's just you know, I think it's important uh, in the heat of the moment. Like if the things aren't going your way, that's when you need a cool head, like and. You know, it mightn't happen first time, whatever. But um, it's just keep encouraging, keep communicating, things like that. You know, but um, you know, they are opposition Western Gales. They have a considerably young team. You know, but I've no doubt that they they have no fear. You know, going out against us on Sunday. So um, it can work both ways, I suppose. You know. Absolutely, Olivia. Um, final question for you. Um. In terms of looking ahead um, to county, have you given it much thought in terms of, you know, it's going to be obviously a very different championship and how much you're looking forward to getting back in, in the maroon jersey and what that might look like later on in the year? Yeah, I suppose really looking forward to get back with Galway. We've been doing quite well in the league and it had been just kind of cut off when we, we, we kind of had been getting going. Um, it'll be nice to go back and play with all the girls again. We're, uh, after the club championship it's kind of strange because we'll be all going back but it'll be great to link in with everyone um, yeah and the matches are going to be quite, quite thick and fast so you could find yourself out if you don't hit the ground running or else you could find yourself in an All-Ireland final if things go your way so it'll be great yeah it's going to be very different daily oh definitely you know and I suppose we're over the last number two years we've just been trying to find our feet in senior and, and get up to the pace of it but um you know we've we've taken a few scalps off teams this year and we've, we've gotten close so we're hoping that you know maybe this shorter format might even suit us a little bit and um we might give people a shock and and hopefully um get through and like olivia said it's it's four matches and, and you're in an all-ireland final possibly you know so um, i think it's a great chance for us this year if, if we can hit the ground running the same as olivia said also i'd be shot it's our 50th anniversary right <laughs> there you go 
<laughs> a very important clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a million. Uh, Olivia and Aileen wish you well um, uh, ahead of the county as well. And, and Louise, very final question to you. Do you still keep an eye on, on Claire and what they're doing? Obviously, they're, they're at intermediate level and looking to get back up to, to, to senior. Um, and always a competitive force, Louise. Do you still check in on their progress and, and monitor how the, how the county team is doing? Yeah, yeah, I do. In fairness, um, I, like we have a few the girls at the club that are playing sure. with Claire, like so. I'd always check in with them how things are going, and you know they've been unlucky. I suppose they've been getting to quarterfinals last couple of years. They're definitely rebuilding, um, you know. But there are some brilliant players within the county, you know, and uh, it, it's just a matter of getting making that breakthrough. Like I know from ourselves back in '08, like we lost two semi-finals and lost the final before we eventually uh, won the final, you know. So. Um, you know, nine, like, and, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, I do think it'll happen for them, but it takes time and it takes a lot of work. But, uh, you know, James Murray, he's doing a great job there with girls and Jerkeen is in with them this year. So, like, just wish them the best luck, like, later on in the year. And, you know, it'll be great. Like, I, I definitely one of their biggest fans. Hopefully they, they'll get to Crow Park. And hopefully we'll see you along the road. We'll definitely... Um look forward to the inter-county season but after the club season has been completed obviously and we're looking forward to more great county finals over the weekend uh, Aileen Wall from Bally McCarby and Waterford thanks a million for coming on Louise Henchy from Clare uh, and the Banner Ladies and Olivia Divoli from Kilcurran, and Clonburn and Galway my special guest today ladies all the best for the weekend and thanks for coming on and talking to me today thanks Jackie thanks, thanks.